The price of freedom is death. We are coming to get our check. Black First Brothers and Sisters, welcome to the Afro Elite YouTube channel. I am your host, Afro Elite. Before we get started, if you guys haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on any future content. Also, leave a like and share this on your various social media pl platforms or to a family or friend because that really does help the reach and growth of the channel. For all of what you guys do to support this channel and just for watching, thank you all very much. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to read an article listing the things that Joe Biden has done for the black community. It's been about like, what, two years since he's been president. So uh, The Root has made an article talking about the things that Joe Biden has done. So let's let's um, look into this and see if there's any validity into the things that Joe Biden has done specifically for the black community. So let's go ahead. OK, so this article is by the root, of course, and it is by Jessica Washington. OK. It, it's the title is two years in what has President Biden done for black Americans? The subtitle is Black Americans helped deliver the presidency to Joe Biden, and he appointed Kamala Harris as his VP. But how else has he delivered on his end of the bargain? Uh, just based off of the subtitle, how else? Well, what is what is the thing? You can't say else if there wasn't no first thing. Is appointing um, Kamala his VP, that doesn't do nothing for black people. Kamala hasn't done anything for black people. Kamala specifically said that she was not going to do anything for black people. So what is that? How, well, what else has he done? What, what is the first thing? Well, you, you going on to else there has to be a first thing before else. So this is already starting off with a bad foot, but let's go. Now, in the article, this is Joe Biden with Katanji Brown Jackson. So you already kind of can get the feel of where they're going with this. But let's continue. Starts off, it's not a stretch to say that without black Americans, Joe Biden might not be sitting in the White House today. Wh which is true. I mean, yeah, there's more than not a stretch to say. So I agree with that part. It continues. Now that we're halfway through his first term, first term, you mean only, but okay. Now that we're halfway through his first term, it's worth checking in to see how Joe Biden has delivered for the community that helped put him into power. Okay. He's talking about first term as if there's a guaranteed second term. Quote, the soul of the Biden administration is black, black and female, says David Dixon the political science professor at Howard University. Black, black and female. Okay, all right, let's 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 continue. It goes on to say, quote, his support was overwhelmingly African-American and female, end quote, says Dixon. Another quote, the energy in the Biden-Harris administration is being directed back to his black constituents. Okay, here's the thing. They keep saying African-American and female. Um, more uh, of the DSM, dominant society member, females, have voted for Trump. So most of them voted for Trump. And when it comes to the Hispanics, they voted more for Biden than Trump, but their voter difference was in such a small margin. It didn't make that big of a difference. It was really the black community. And I'm talking about the black men and the black women who put him in office, unfortunately, but who put him in office. So they're saying it's black and female. Female didn't take give him the presidency. He didn't win off of the female vote. Had it been for females, because he's trying to say, you know, women love. No, no. Had it been up to the female vote, just based off of females alone, Joe Biden would have lost. The, the few females 
the the few percentage i guess ethnic groups of females who voted for him more than joe biden that like the hispanics you know that wouldn't have carried him anywhere so so already they're trying to split the credit of who put joe biden in there because it was not the female vote it was the black vote that put him in there and then it continues to say he uh his administration is directed back to his the energy in the what does that mean it's not nothing besides shade in the middle finger has been directed back to the black constituents let's continue biden nominated 25 black judges to federal court okay so i guess they're talking about that dixon has some clear examples to back up his point in the first two years in office Biden nominated at least 25 black judges to the federal court and the first black woman to the Supreme Court, Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. What does it mean that they're black judges in the federal court? We're not doing the whole, well, we have more representation. We need more political representation. So we're just going to be satisfied. Katanji Brown Jackson is anti-black based off of her history and based off of her beliefs. Katanji Brown Jackson is not looking out for black people. Kamala Harris is not looking out for black people. And I doubt that anybody that Joe Biden appointed to the federal court is going to look out for black people at all. So them being black doesn't mean anything to me. And it doesn't mean anything to black society. It doesn't help black people at all that there are black judges in there if they're going to get in there and if they're going to try to act as anti-black as possible to fit in with the non-black judges because that's what a lot of times they do they get in and they try to show out to separate themselves from the rest of black society and based off of the fact that we know joe biden is a racist he's not going to pick anybody who's um going to go against racism so that doesn't mean anything especially if they want, oh, the first black woman to the Supreme Court. What does that do for black people? What does that even do for black women? Ketanji Brown Jackson asks her, she don't even know what a woman is. She's not going to stand up for women, especially black women. Continuing, speaking of promoting competent black women. Oh, wow, that's a, who, who was competent? You saying Ketanji Brown Jackson? is competent the the supreme court judge who if you ask what a woman is she can't even give you a definition speaking of competent black women uh well yeah let's speak of them because you haven't mentioned one yet speaking of competent black women dixon also pointed to biden's decision to choose kamala harris as vp as his vp quote that was significant says dixon dixon and then he quotes, he selected Kamala Harris as his running mate, making her the first African-American vice president in our history, end quote, he says. Listen, Kamala Harris, while she was running for president against Joe Biden, and she was asked about spe doing things specifically for black people, she said with pride and with her chest, that she is not going to do anything specifically for black people at all. Kamala Harris has had nothing but a notorious anti-black history. She's had a history of locking black people up and pretty much throwing away the key, so much so that it was inhumane what she was doing. She was getting in trouble with her job the way she was locking black people up and pretty much enslaving them because she was using the prisoners to put out forest fires in California. And if you guys don't believe me, you guys can go look that up for petty little weed crimes and things like that. Locking black parents up if their uh, kids miss school. She was doing all of that stuff. There was a black person that wasn't behind bars that she didn't enjoy seeing. So the saying Kam uh, Kamala Harris, who's sometimes black, other times Asian, then maybe sometimes white. You don't know what she is. And it, what does that mean that she's the VP? We had a whole, let them tell it, black president, Barack Obama. 
They, they, they was all like, oh my God, the first black president. This man was the president of the United States for two whole terms. And black people did not benefit at all for it. Everybody else did. He made sure he went out of his way to look out for everybody else. Black people didn't benefit. Black people sat there and be like, oh, well, I mean, you, you can take inspiration for the fact that he was there. No. So if, if we got a black president, having a black VP don't mean anything. Oh, my God. The first black VP. Well, we had a black president. That bar has already been reached and, and surpassed, to be honest. She's not surpassing anything that hasn't already been done. And even if she was, oh, the first VP. Yay. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything, especially considering the fact that it's Kamala Harris. It, it continues to say. While Biden's policy agenda has largely been humstrung, we'll get into that in a minute, Dixon says we cannot discount the impact of Biden's work at the executive level on voting rights. In March of 2021, Biden enacted a sweeping executive order directing federal agencies to expand access to voting. The thing is, is that black people already have voting rights. We've had voting rights for decades. OK, black people are not being suppressed from voting. That, that's not our issue. That's not even in the top five of our issues that we have going on. What we have going on, the bigger issue than voting rights is having somebody to vote for. The thing is that, yeah, we can get to the polls if we want to. We can damn sure do that. But the thing is, is that when we get to the polls, there's nobody who's going to be looking out for black people on the ballot. That is the problem. Not getting to the polls, somebody being for our agenda on the ballot. And he's talking about voting rights. Most of his voting rights access and all of that stuff. He's doing that for Hispanics. He's doing that for illegals. He's trying to say, oh, you don't need a license to vote. You don't know because most black people have licenses. We, mostly we have licenses and legal documents and all of that stuff. And if we don't have that, we sh we can get that. The issue is, is that um, he's trying to allow these illegals to come over here and vote because he knows that he he's elevating them as the buffer class. That is the issue. That's the problem. It's not the fact that he can. Oh, the voting rights. Look, man. More black people are turning away from voting. If we're going to be honest, more black people are saying, you know what? This voting stuff this is not working. It's not helping. There's no need to me for me to be wasting my time with voting. So as black people are turning away from the polls, you want to give us uh, credit? You want to tell us to give credit to Joe Biden for, for signing an executive order for voting? No, get out of here. OK, and let's continue. What has Biden done about student debt? Biden's decision to forgive thousands Biden's decision to forgive thousands of dollars of student debt was another area he was fulfilling his promise to black voters who are disproportionately impacted by student debt, says Dixon. The program is currently on hold thanks to Republican legal challenges. Okay. You want us to give Joe Biden credit. And, and let's say we are disproportionately impacted. We don't make up most of the student debt, but let's say we're disproportionately impacted by student debt. Why are we most disproportionately impacted by student debt? Let's go into that. That is because when we take out the loans for the education, we don't have the base to really pay for it full out. Uh, when we take out the loans for the education, and then when we get the education and get the degree and all of that, we don't get the jobs and the jobs that we get don't pay us enough money to pay the student loan off. That is the problem. There's a whole bunch of black people's uh, black people who have degrees and have student debts. But when they were in college, the job that they thought that they were going to get from uh, college based off of their career and their degree, they don't get, or at least the salary that they thought they were going to get, they're not getting. So they're not able to pay the student debt like they thought they were. So that is the bigger issue. So to, and to fix that reparations, reparations would fix that lickety split. Reparations would take care of that 100%. But you're not, we're not giving Joe Biden credit for that. 
um, forgive thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. That's not nothing. That's not nothing. That's you can say, oh, Biden's decision to forgive thousands of dollars. That's like a couple thousands of dollars doesn't mean anything. That's a very low amount. That's literally one or two people. Student loans are thousands of dollars. One person's student loan is more than thousands of dollars to say, oh, he's he decided to forgive thousands of dollars worth of student debt. That can literally, literally only mean one person. And then he's he, and this isn't specific for black people. There was absolutely nothing specific in Biden's student debt relief that says anything specifically about black people. What we're not going to do is we're not going to. Well, black people are just proportionately affected by student debt. So this is kind of specifically for black people. We're not playing that game at all. Because nobody else gets that game played. Well, you're disproportionately affected by Russia. So when we give all the money to Europe, you'll disproportionately benefit Ukraine. They don't say that to them. So you're not going to say we're going to forgive everybody's student debt because you have more of it than, you know, it's kind of really specifically for you. So we're going to put that on our list as a, as a check mark on our list. No. And then he's not even doing it. They're saying this program has currently on hold. You want us to give him credit for something that he hasn't done for thousands of dollars of student death relief that he hasn't forgiven? <clears throat> Quote, it's still in legal limbo, says Dixon. But once that's resolved, if it goes through, it will be a big deal because people who receive Pell Grants will receive a significant mo uh, amount more. And a lot of African-American and Latino students do have pale grants so in the root where they talked about what has joe biden done for black americans they said african-american and latino students okay so even in their list of things that joe biden has done for black people it's not even they can't even make an artificial list that's exclusively for black people then it goes on to say student death is hardly the only issue where, is Bi where Biden's policy has been blocked. Oh, so Biden just can't get nothing done for black people. Now, if you were Ukraine, nobody can stop Joe Biden from supporting Ukraine and bending over backwards for Ukraine and helping Ukraine out and doing all of this stuff for Ukraine. But, you know, if, if you're black, oh, my God, the Republicans, what are we going to do? Then it says, I'm not sure why it's like all spaced out like this. It says, Stephen Taylor, a government professor at American University, says it's nearly impossible to judge what kind of president Biden has been for black Americans since he hasn't been able to get most of his policies through Congress. Quote, you don't have a Congress that's willing to vote on anything that's going to improve a lot of black people. Uh, says Taylor. Now, the issue is, is that Joe Biden signs executive orders for other groups of people. He doesn't need things to get past Congress. And the thing is, is that when Joe Biden was in office, uh, Congress was blue. The House and the Senate were blue. So he had a lot of support. He, yeah, he might have had some pushback from the Republicans. But the thing is, is that uh, he, if we have a hard time believing that, oh, Joe Biden just can't do it. He's trying so hard. It's just impossible for him to do it because, you know, you got to go through Congress and the filibuster and the filibuster is just so, so hard to go get past. What, what about executive orders? He's specifically like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Not not for Negroes. No, no. For everybody else. Remember when he um became president and there was that picture of him having a stack uh, damn near all the way to the ceiling in the Oval Office of Executive Orders, he was just signing, and all of them were for non-black people. He's not signing one executive order for black people. He's not doing anything specifically for black people. He's not even pushing any of his promises or policies that he's, quote-unquote, made for black people. So I'm not trying to hear the, well, you know, Congress is just really tough to get anything through Congress excuse. We're not doing that. We're not going to do that. Fundamentally, Taylor says Biden is a conscious president 
who faces an uphill battle to secure any victories for black Americans. Oh, man, damn. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Quote, in light of composition of Congress and the Supreme Court, I don't think there's much he could have done that would have gotten done, says Taylor. I don't even that that sentence didn't even make sense. OK, and how does the Supreme Court how is the Supreme Court stopping Joe Biden from doing what he wants to do, pushing any policies? I don't know that and now the Supreme Court is against him, too. I thought he uh, put uh, 25 black faces in there. What is the Supreme Court stopping him from doing now? It continues to say, quote, he's showing his cautiousness of someone who was in the Senate for over 36 years. Oh, OK. So in the list of things that Biden has done for black people, literally the only thing that they've said so far is he appointed Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris as his VP and Katanji Brown Jackson in the Supreme Court. And besides that, it's been, well, he's tried to do this. He's tried to do that. Anyway, it continues to say, Taylor says that Biden has been hesitant to support legislative left-leaning priorities favored by, quote, the squad, a group of progressive Democrats in the House many of which are targeted at people of color. Now, they already said black and brown, black and Latino. Now it's people of color. I thought this was the Joe Biden blacklist. I thought this was the list of things that Joe Biden has done for black Americans. This is a very sorry list. And they're trying to make, they're trying to uh, save face for Joe Biden. And they can't even do that. It continues Quote, he's not necessarily working with them to get their priorities done because he understands from working with the Senate that he's going to get stymied. Now, that pretty stymied pretty much is uh, or stymied, I believe it's pronounced, is pretty much prevented. Is it going to be restricted or blocked or something? Says Taylor. Then it goes on to say, have black Americans thrived under Joe Biden? Short answer. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. OK. But let's continue. Another way to look at the Biden presidency is to look at how black Americans have actually fared under his leadership. On the bright side, um, I'm not going to say that word out loud, but y'all know what it is. C19 death among black Americans have plummeted. Okay. And, and that's because of Joe Biden. Now, the, the cardiac arrest of athletes falling out, just, just passing out, falling out, and young people having cardiac arrest and, and heart attacks and all of that stuff, that's risen. You, you want to talk about all of the side effects that's risen? If you want to talk about those deaths declining, we got to talk about the side effects that's risen. It goes on to say, but things haven't been all sunshine and rainbows. All, what? All sunshine and rainbows? Where is the sunshine and rainbows? Anyway. Um skyrocketing inflation rates have been devastating for black americans in august roughly 55 percent of black americans told npr that they were facing financial difficulties yeah that's why we need reparations this is why we're coming to get our check and yeah the inflation and that is because of joe biden's decisions because people want to say it's not joe biden it is continuing despite the fact that president's often have limited control over things like inflation. Biden's polls among uh, black Americans look at, mm, okay, continuing, despite the fact that presidents often have limited control over things like inflation, Biden's poll numbers among black Americans took a noticeable hit at the beginning of the summer as pieces of everyday household items surged although he did regain much of his popularity closer to the midterms. I don't know what they're talking about. The Democrats barely made it out. The, they barely made it out the ring with that midterm. Okay. Stacey Abrams lost after quote unquote, turning Georgia blue for Joe Biden. Stacey Abrams lost the second time worse than she did the first time. And even uh, Raphael Warnock, um, 
he barely won against Herschel Walker. So uh, is is uh, I don't know what they're talking about. He regained popularity. The Democrats flopped damn near. They barely made it out of there. Okay, the the midterms did not look good on the Democratic Party or Joe Biden whatsoever. Continuing, going into the second half of his first term, they keep saying first term, uh, Dixon says that Biden will have to find ways to address inflation by doing more than just raising interest rates. Quote, we need a much more robust plan to address inflation and to hopefully offset a recession that many people think is around the corner. Dixon says inflation is disproportionately impacting African-Americans and the recession is going to have another disproportionate impact. And that's because when America gets the flu or when America gets the cold, a cold black America gets the flu. Or I think the term is when America gets a, the flu, black America gets pneumonia, whatever the term is, when anything that happens bad to America non-black america that means that thing is doubled or tripled for black america so y'all want to talk about joe biden his first term the way the inflation rate is going joe biden this is his only term his last term of anything now reading the last of this it says as far as the question of whether biden's presidency has been transformative for black americans or not dixon says it's still too soon to tell it's been two years. The term is only four years. How is it soon too soon to tell? We're halfway through. It's it's too soon to tell. What is, he's just gonna transform black Americans uh lives in the third year? What are you talking? What what it's too soon to tell? What the hell? It continues. Quote It is a difficult question, says Dixon. Sometimes when you are developing a negative photo. It takes a few seconds. So what you see in the beginning when you develop the negative is different from what's to follow. Man, no, 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 no. This is difficult. Joe Biden has been president for two years and black Americans have only been put in a worse position than we were before. OK, if you want to talk about the, the C-19, I almost said it. If you want to talk about the C-19 deaths, black people weren't making up majority of those anyway. So, oh, and okay, the, the virus is pretty much over now for the most part. So all of everybody is, is you know, their deaths of that virus is plummeting. You can't say, oh, see, that's what he did for black people. No, everybody in all the rates of death from that in America has plummeted. So this this list, the only thing they could talk about is, hey, man, Katanji Brown Jackson, Kamala Harris. That's significant. I mean, they're so competent, competent in what? We don't know. They don't even know what a woman is. Then they directly said that they're not going to do anything specifically for black people, but they're supposed to be competent. And we're supposed to give Joe Biden some brownie points for that. In the in the article, they're talking about, you know, black African African Americans, and we don't even refer to ourselves as African Americans. We we FBA over here, but African Americans and women and women, women didn't put you through, women didn't help you beat Trump, women didn't give you the seat. It was black people who gave you the seat. Had it been up to women, you would have lost. He would have lost had it been up to women. Then, well, well, student loans, he tried to do that. He couldn't do it. But black and brown, what? And this goes to show, I'm glad they made this article. This goes to show even when you're trying to falsify some good image for Biden on behalf of black people, even when you're trying to say he's done some good things for black people and you make a whole paragraph, a whole article, I mean, that favors Joe Biden, it still looks like, man, Joe Biden is a shitty president. It still looks that bad. But family, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. You should be following me on my social media pages. That is at the Afro Elite on Twitter and then at Afro Elite on Instagram. Before you all leave, if you haven't done so, please make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell and leave a thumbs up and share this to a family or friend or on your very social media platforms because that really does help the reach and growth of the channel. With that being said, brothers and sisters, be one salute to every single last one of you. Thank you for watching. You all have a good one.